So today on Sports Follow, we're going to take a very interesting look uh, at one of the kind of forgotten superstars of the NHL of the 1960s and 1970s. William Alfred Goldsworthy, better known to his uh, friends and many followers in Minnesota as Bill Goldsworthy. Now, <clears throat> he had an NHL season that lasted a very impressive 14 years, mostly with the Minnesota North Stars. Now, he was one of the top right wingers of his era, and uh, his prestige even led him to be selected for Team Canada 1972 Summer Series against the Russians, but we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later on in the podcast. Now, born August 24th uh, in Waterloo, Ontario, the six foot one, 190 pounder was uh, initially signed by the Boston Bruins of the NHL as a teenager, and eventually uh, played his uh, junior uh, games with the uh, OHA's uh, Bruins affiliate called the Niagara Falls Flyers. Now, at the time, uh, <coughs> NHL teams had direct affiliation with. Uh, either uh, junior teams in uh, you know Quebec, Ontario, Toronto, Canada, I think even the States as well. Now the Flyers were a very powerful team at the time and he made uh, two more Bill Cups uh, during his tenure and the team itself, like, if you ask the mayor of uh, former mayor of the house, he claimed Trombley, but the Flyers, he can tell you a lot because he played with them, he was a prospect in their system for years and uh, such stalwarts as uh, were created during uh, goals worrying Trombley's era such as, you know, Derek Sanderson, Jim Lorenz, Bernie Perron, Jean Pranavo, Don Marcotte, Doug Favelle, and Rosier Pema. <clears throat> now, the strong uh, team that the Flyers had, he made it to the Memorial Cup in 63 and won an outright in uh, 65. And the goal was uh, still a, a high point uh, getter with the team. He finished second and third in his last uh, two seasons with the club. Now, um, with the Bruins, he had partial... Uh, Seasons with both, uh, I think, the 65 and 66 and 67. And uh, at the time, you have to understand, too, this is before the big expansion to 12 teams. And with no uh, big league uh, team of the original six would have a roster spot for Goldsworthy, he became uh, available in the uh, expansion draft. And uh, as a prep for this, he served uh, two years in the minor leagues, playing with the, the also strong Oklahoma City Blazers of the CHL and the Buffalo Bisons of AHL and uh, you know he impressed in the minors because not only for his skill he seemed to be very uh, you know very adept at team play like you know uh, motivation on the bench now with the expansion he was drafted in the uh, the middle rounds uh, by the Minnesota North Stars who were one of the marquee teams straight out of the box uh, for the uh, well uh, you know the expansion side of the league uh, he scored eight goals and 15 points uh, in the uh, inaugural 67-68 uh, 12-team playoff and game winning one game of making the NHL final. That's very impressive for a young player with a new squad. Now, he, he had uh, bursts of points and goal scoring uh, throughout his career, especially in 1970 when he scored 36 goals uh, with, uh, with linemates such as the great uh, Dennis Hextall and Jude Dwayne. And uh, he became a regular 30, 35 goal scorer in the next six years. And uh, technically, he was the the initial great expansion star that wasn't, uh, you know, an original six player that moved on to the other teams. Because it was quite a few. Now, his best offensive season was, of course, in uh, a very key one for year, the 1973-74 season, where he led the uh, Western Conference of the Association in scoring. I think only. Uh, you know, Phyllis Vizito, a few other players could compare with his points that year. And uh, he should have made uh, first or second team uh, right wing for the NHL, but he missed out. And uh, what well, was kind of weird, too, he started uh, showing his personality after, uh, you know, being made captain. He had this move that was called the goalie shuffle. Whenever time he scored, that became, it endeared him to a lot of uh, fans in the Minneapolis uh, Twin City areas and across uh, Central and Western U.S. and Canada. Now, the 75 team captaincy uh, happened when former Montreal Canadian uh, Ted Harris was eventually traded, and he was uh, that captain for two years. Now, by 1976, his uh, his career started to fade out a little bit, and uh, mainly because uh, Minnesota didn't make the playoffs over a three-year span. And uh, Goldsworthy, uh, in published reports later on 
claim he was having a difficulty because uh, he had uh, some trouble with the bottle over the years and uh, the chronic alcoholism he had eventually led to his departure due to uh, you know factors that sometimes have with addiction and he was dealt to the uh, New York Rangers but he became quickly part of NHL WHA history writer for this uh, he didn't really uh, put together great games with the Rangers but he eventually became the first NHL player to be traded outright to a WHA team called the Indianapolis Racers who he helped coach for his uh, tenure there uh, he later went on to the Edmonton Oilers and played on the, the same team with Wayne Gretzky that year and uh, his 17 games finished out his career now uh, getting back to the Team Canada appearance he uh, found himself on the roster of the 1972 Team Canada squad that that uh, played Russia in an eight game series and to say his performance there was lackluster would be an understatement Goldsworthy uh, basically was in a big pool of talent and was asked to do things he really couldn't be able to do and uh, the key loss in Canada for Team Canada in Game 4 with the, uh, were dropped 5 tree by the Russians uh, Goldsworthy uh, had a very you know up and down game he took two very bad penalties early in the game which led to Russian power play goals he did score a game a goal but he seemed to be a little bit too aggressive uh, for the, uh, you know, Team Canada, uh, what do you call, uh, it's okay to be aggressive, but he took really stupid penalties rather than aggressive penalties. Most uh, Team Canada players were getting penalties for diving, while in case he was a little bit too, too fiscal, and he didn't have the mentality to kind of get away from showing his aggressivity to the referees, he'd do it right in front of them, that were the two goals I've seen, so. But uh, game four couldn't be just blamed on him, but he didn't, he didn't do anything to help his team. Now what's really bizarre, after the, uh, the final in game eight where Henderson scored late, he decided to make a physical gesture for several times against the people in the stand saying F you, F you. Like, and we were watching that uh, back in the day, we were wondering who he was talking to. There was over 3,000 fans in Piastani and uh, they were totally behind Team Canada so I know he was frustrated but he was making like this you know what I'm talking about the Italian gesture with you know it kind of ruined his reputation a little bit because you're saying to yourself well players had more right to say that and he didn't say that to the media or anything else like he really lost his mind like Gary Bergman a lot of players but you can't blame Goldsbury too much on it because you know it was a lot of stress on Team Canada he unfortunately uh, had a bad, bad situation after he retired. You know, he ended his career with some great totals after the highest, uh, highest ranked, uh, you know, expansion player and a highest ranked scorer in, in uh, Stars history with 283 goals and 258 assists. Now, get to the bad, uh, you know, bad of the podcast. Uh, I think it was late, early winter, late, you know, November 94, when uh, he uh, was officially diagnosed uh, with HIV infection. And uh, it was a quick, quick uh, advanced uh, disease for him. He developed uh, AIDS uh, because of it. And... uh, in 1995, he basically, made, you know, talked to the media, especially St. Paul Pioneer Press, and he said uh, the health problems he, he contracted, he felt believe uh, came from his uh, drinking and his promiscuity. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, the disease advanced and he died the next year. But uh, you know, he uh, he is a link to a lot of uh, positivity in his career. I don't want to stress a negative here because unfortunately with some diseases, especially communicable ones, there's all different factors. I'm not one to judge. I think if Goldsworthy would have uh, lived uh, past, uh, unfortunately, 1996 when he did pass away, he would be probably something to look to as an associate coach or developer of youth hockey or a motivator for the Minneapolis area. His death was a, a big loss to a lot of his fans and colleagues and, and teammates. He lived the life he wanted to live and uh, he made his mark because no one really gave too much of uh, 
uh, a concern about uh, you know the original six until he started playing Montreal. Uh, we all know the 1971 series; it was Stars against uh, Montreal after Montreal won their first round against Boston. Minnesota had a very talented team at that time, including Goldsworthy, these great teammates, and he impressed a lot of people. And the North Shore, New Brunswick, uh, a lot of people loved that. Uh, North Star logo, and that logo has been adopted directly and indirectly by many teams as either their unofficial second logo or for their squad. Uh, you look at uh, Carlton North, it's not the same logo, but the North Stars, it just rings off the bell. And Goldsworthy was the face of the North Stars for so many years. I mean, how many people remember getting these hockey cards back in the day with that really weird fitting helmet he decided to use after he decided to not go... Uh, <laughs> Hell, not uh, to give up uh, going without a helmet. You know, he was he was uh, sort of like uh, you know his haircut was like Gila Fleur a little bit. It was very uh, unique. So, uh, so on this fine day, we uh, anybody listening to this or a big fan of Bulls Goldworthy, I'm glad that you follow his career so uh, so directly. He was a great talent, and again, he's one of those forgotten uh, stars of the '70s and '80s NHL, and they had many, and uh, actually. Uh, uh, a, uh, a follower of our podcast, Kendall Guyberson, who has been involved in uh, sports throughout the years, directly or indirectly, a very uh, well-read and uh, well-thought-of individual throughout Canada. He uh, kind of unofficially gave me the idea for this podcast. And for Kendall, basically, uh, he knows the importance of people remembering the building blocks uh, of the, uh, what I call the third major era of the NHL of the 60s, 70s, and 80s, because it wasn't just Gretzky. It wasn't just Lafleur. It wasn't just Strachey. It wasn't just Bossing. There was a lot of great players out there, but because of the media recognition, they kind of fell by the wayside. But every time I take a Phil Esposito, I take a Bill Bull Goldsworthy because that infamous hockey card where they were sharing it, and you know, uh, you know, that's what it was in the '70s. There was a lot of talent, and he was featured in a lot of hockey magazines and uh, posters and collectibles and stuff that are still out there. By the way, a little shout out: uh, we're having a. Uh, Collector show in Florenceville, uh, New Brunswick at the uh, Florenceville Legion on the uh, 16th of March at uh, 10 o'clock. <coughs> there will be admission fee, but uh, it's very small. Proceeds to uh, uh, basically uh, certain group efforts. There'll be uh, cards, uh, coins, collectibles, antiques, uh, different boots, features. Please, uh, patron, and uh, go early because it's a great, great bunch of people at the Florenceville Collectors Club. We wish them the best and. Uh, They've always supported me through the years, and I've supported them because part of this podcast is all about celebrating fans and, and uh, you know, uh, genres and all that, and collectible is uh, put together. So on this fine day, we're waiting for another storm to come into Brunswick. Uh, we wish everybody happy days, and keep your stick in the ice. Have a good day. Bye.